What's going on ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say um, thank you for joining me once again on another episode of 567 Now What? Um, this is the podcast which is pretty much speaking about dancers transitioning to something else um, within their career or adding on to their skills and today we have Ricky Norwood. Welcome Ricky. How you doing brother? You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Oh, thank you, bro. I know you've wanted to do podcast for a minute, so it's it's really kind of like an honor to be a part of your inaugural uh, podcast uh, transition journey. So, uh, yeah, man. Thank you, my friend. Much appreciated. Yeah, um, I've known Ricky for a long, long time. Um, again, he's one of my best friends, and it's honestly been really cool to see his transitions from from when I first met him basically how did we meet ricky we met on the musical daddy call so um i i remember you coming in as a uh, a dancer for the germany tour yes and um yeah so i i, I remember um we done the west end tour but then they need, they wanted new cast and they wanted new uh dancers for the germany tour and i remember meeting you in rehearsals i think you was in rehearsals for about two weeks before i turned yeah, up yeah you're right i totally forgot about that part yeah we came in a little yeah. bit earlier than you guys did because we had a whole bunch of things to learn yeah, um, well, I mean, we already done the show for like a year and a bit. So you like you guys had to learn the show and learn all the bits and pieces. And then I think it was like two weeks before. I think you, you guys had two weeks. And then once we came in, we started to put the two sides together. Yeah. yeah. So the new cast with the with the, you know, the original cast. And we started to mix and blend and, and, and find the new energies with, within the group. Yeah, totally. Well said. That's exactly what happened. And it was it was amazing. So yeah, I pretty much like lived um with Ricky in Germany, in Berlin to be more specific, for three months. And yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> and then Yeah, we, all know, of us were living in one house, right? Basically like uh we had it was like flats in like yeah. a, a, li- a little block and uh you was directly underneath me, if I remember. Like yeah, the flat directly right. underneath me, yeah. I believe you're right, me and Royston. Crazy. Good times. Yeah. Yeah, um, really okay, so time. today, um, Ricky comes from a dance background, though he had shifted, has had shifted into acting. So yeah, I just want to um, just share a bit more of just, I don't know, just like where you come from, like what your background is within dance and then how you kind of like transitioned. So dance has always kind of been a part of my life. Um so the my nan as a as a baby as a toddler my nan used to take me to um Covent Garden uh when pineapple and the break dancers used to used to have mats out and kind of be doing kind of outside performances and stuff like that and as a baby i remember kind of always being brought up by one of the dancers and um you know and perfor- and performing like a child does you know i remember kind of one of the earliest uh, memories uh, for me was trying to do a head spin but basically as a child head spin I just put my head on on the mat and I just ran around my head <laughs> and, and I've and seen we'll, that before yeah and when I've I got when I got up when I got up I got a massive round of applause and I was kind of like oh okay all right cool so that was that was my kind of first foray in into dance and um, That's amazing. so dance has always been a part of my life I remember being about 11ish 12ish being in primary school and um there was a a, a guy called cat his name's uh cat boyce he, he he's done like mtv and he's he's uh, been on a comedy circuit recently and stuff like that and um but at that stage he was into dance a lot and he was starting up a dance group at forest gate youth center um, i'm originally a forest gate boy oh, yeah we're, we're both born we're both born in forest gate yeah, and and that was one of our kind of our kind of tie-ins. Yeah, yeah, one of our connections during the time. But um, I remember around that time there was, um, and if anyone's from East London or Newham wise, you and you're of an age, you probably would remember the Metropolitan Police um, dance competitions. The Met Police actually put on the dance competition. What? And I know that. Yeah, yeah. So they used to do it every year, and. They, um, and the first year we ended up winning gold 
and the second year we won silver. Although we believe it, we kind of got robbed because you know we couldn't win every year one of those ones. But um, yeah, so that's when Cat came in, and he came in as a kind of a dance choreographer, stroke um, tutor and mentor, and he ended up starting a dance group called Rough Stuff in um, at Forest Gate Youth Centre. And that's when my dance journey began. Uh, my street dance journey began. Uh, we used to go there every Thursday, sometimes on a Tuesday as well, if we had a show at the end of the week. And we, we would train together. I was one of the only boys in that class at that time. And um, yeah, man, we just had a, a lot, a lot of fun, you know? So, and, and that's when my dance journey began. So at what point within there did you kind of shift into acting? Like, how did that start taking a role within your life acting was always a part of the performance life as it were um so it was always there but I treated I, I had dance on a on a higher pedestal at that point when I was growing up but how, so, how but, was it there though how, how was it at, how at, was acting how, like how did I how, no. how did I transition or how did you, you said acting was always a part of your life right yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was but always how? like a they, well, there was always uh, performances. So they, so sometimes our, our our dance performances would have little scenes in them, or like you would have like an intro or an outro, or sometimes uh, we would be doing the show. Like so, we would have a show at the Theatre Royal Stratford East, and there might be like a little bit of acting to do w w within the performance. Or b before the dance performance. So, so you're, um, sorry, sorry to interrupt. So you're saying that acting kind of like slotted into your life through dance? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And I, I ended up at the same time, um, a little while after Forest Gate You Sent, I ended up joining a drama uh, club, after school drama club called Tom Allen, which was in Stratford at the time. Um, it's shut down now. But, um, so I was always doing one or the other and I kind of, I didn't know that they could be mixed, but I was always doing one or the other. And as time progressed, if it wasn't acting or dancing, then I was presenting, you know, or I was writing a show with uh, my two, my two brothers at the time. And we ended up like making our own production company called DRD Productions, where we went on and we done our own shows, where we kind of infused all of our skills to make a show. Um, so it was always there, but I never knew how much I loved it, or I never knew how serious I could take acting, um, because I, I enjoyed dance so much at that time. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it, it was always there. But the transition really came after college, I suppose. You know, so I went to college, I'd done a BTEC National and I'd done a HNC in Performing Arts. And once I came out of, of college, I kind of had this massive feeling that, you know, what, I, I, I need to be acting more and I, I, I enjoy acting more. And I knew right. that I could kind of, I could use my dance skills and my dance base within acting. You know, I knew that it could be a skill in which, in which I could completely use use as a as a part of my talent, as a part of like who I am to move to move forward. Whether that was actually dancing within a production or using the timing that we learn through dance, you know, to use that for comedy or to use that for stage presence or or like entrances, ex exits, you know, when certain things. So, so, for instance, a joke, when a joke would, would drop, it would drop on the eight, yeah? So there was you, there was many a time that I could use my my kind of, my dance background within the acting. And once right. I knew I could do that, that's when I kind of went in kind of, you know, full steam ahead. So, so would you say that you loved one more than the other? Or one just kind of just like, it just took you more? Like your acting just kind of like took you more within that time? Um, I loved dance to begin with, because like I say, from when Nan took me to Covent Garden and stuff like that, dance was always in my belly. Right. But, but I, once I knew that I could use dance and once I knew that if I became an actor, that I wouldn't 
lose it entirely. You know, that didn't mean I had to to shun it or to cut it out of my life. It, I could use those skills. I just fell into acting because the one thing that I knew with acting is that you could become anyone. You can the, the one thing that was really exciting is that I could put my my, my feet into other people's shoes a hundred times, you know. And um, so that's really what kind of caught my attention when it came down to acting. That makes sense. Um, okay, so what was the question? Do you feel like when you kind of jumped into acting more, did you feel like you left like an old part of yourself behind or or were you just yeah do you know what i mean because it's yeah. quite a lifestyle do you know what i mean like where yeah. you came from within dance or like the friends or everything do you feel like you kind of like left it to move on to something yeah a, a part of me does i mean i knew i could infuse it but a part of me does i, I remember being in the rehearsal room for daddy call in the west end uh, b- before you joined and you know i i auditioned as an actor uh, performer and as, as for one of the roles within w- within the within the show right. and i remember being in rehearsals and the the director said okay guys let's have all the dancers on the right hand side and let's have all the actors on stage and i remember my foot going towards the right like i remember going towards where the dancers were because you know that was my base, but then I had to r- realize that oh no, I'm not, I'm I'm not a dancer. I'm I'm an actor. So right. I had to take the I had to take the left foot and I had to yeah. go towards yeah. the the stage, and like that was a, a right. yeah, that was a big that was one of my big realizations that oh okay, this is what I'm doing now, you know, and um, you know, p- part of me as well felt that acting had had a a bit more longevity within it yeah you know so so yeah like that was the that was the first time that I was kind of like oh am I leaving this I had had the feeling or of am I leaving this behind is this something in my past now but listen through daddy call itself there were I done a couple of roles right so I I had my main role that was there as the right hand man but then I also kind of uh, played a, a, a post office Trinidadian guy, and then I also was part of, you know, some of the big dance numbers as well because that was all within me. So yeah. I got, so, I, I, yeah. Every time I felt played. that I've left it, yeah, and every time that I felt that I've left it, it's always come back. You know, even so much so on the film I've just shot in Scotland. So um, last year I filmed a film called uh, The Princess Switch Two. And this right. year we've, we we filmed Princess Switch three, right? And even within even within the what I've just done over Christmas, uh, January and February, there were dance elements. I mean, they they were doing they're doing like a like a kind of like a end of credits dance. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, okay, well, Ricky can dance. Like, let's bring him in. And I'm like, right. yo. Uh, you, you know, I'm I'm kind of retired. Do you know what I mean? But it's like you you're never really retired. You're never really retired. You know, if somebody so, needs me to do the, the seven and eight, then I'm I'm down. Let's go. So you would say, even in the field that you're in right now, your dance background has helped you succeed within it. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, um, I can tell you a story. Uh, when I when I've done Princess Switch two last year over Christmas. Right. There was a scene in which I had to spill some champagne on Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa Hudgens is in a film, okay? So right. there's, a, there's a scene in which um, I'm not facing her. I'm facing the bar. Um, and I've got a kind of back up, you know, like not looking at her back up. I've got a turn and I've got to spill the drink on her um, all within the right amount of time and the right amount of pacing. And all of it was to do with dance. Like I counted when she came in, I counted how many eights it took her to come in and say her line. I knew what eight I had to kind of back, you know, look at her, clock her and then back up and turn and drop all at the same time. And like, you know, it was like the first take we got it. We've done a couple of more takes, obviously, but it was within the first take that I got it. And every single time that we um, started the take again, the right. count was in my head. So definitely like dance has always been a part 
and it will always be a part I've realized uh, of, of my kind of my acting life and my performing life right amazing amazing yeah it's just interesting to think about it do you know what I mean because I'm a big believer in um you know I me mean? I like I like to do multiple things but I do mm. believe that everything helps everything that you do do you know yeah. what I mean I feel like there is a way of intertwining and interlinking what you do without you even really knowing that you're doing it so yeah it's interesting to hear that sort of story like that so you're, you yeah, pretty I'm... much choreograph the scene Pre- pretty much pretty much and whenever you know when I was in EastEnders as well it was like um whenever there was stunt work as in there was a fight happening to me, it was all dance. To me, it was all dance. Do you know what I mean? Approach, you know, turn the guy, you know, when you swing, you know, how you miss. All of it was to do with movement and dance and pacing and timing and all of those things that I, that, that was in me from a kid would, would right. come out, you know, and, and would be useful. Amazing. Um, it's a good thing that you mentioned Descenders. I was going to just mention that a little bit. Like, within cuz you were in there for you were in there for a long time like you yeah. had a really amazing run like what do you feel like just from that standpoint of your career cuz again that was like i feel like that was a big transition for you just even as mm. an actor in general what do you feel like you had learned from that as an artist um there, there was loads. I mean, it's a great training ground, first and foremost. Um, a lot of people believe that because the show's on for half an hour, that it will take half an hour to film. And that's not true. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Every episode, you know, it might have taken a week to do one episode sometimes, you know? Right. And um, you have to be really quick. You know, so there, there, there would be times that you might get your script the week before and you, you'll prep yourself and I'd make sure I, I prep myself and learn what I needed to learn. But then whether it be like the night before or majority of the time, Pete, it would be when you turn up on set that the mm. the script had changed. Uh, you've got new pages. You've got new words like the big chunk that you've just learned has been either kind of shrunk down or it's been expanded with new <laughs> lines in it. Yeah. Yeah. Real and, life, right? Yeah. Real life, bro. And um, it would be, and, and this is on set. So this is like just before, you know, and when you're on set, there's like a read through and then there might be like a rehearsal for cameras and then you're basically in. Right. So I, I would, it, it really taught me how quick I could be in like learning my script, um, you know, not just learning it, but performing it, finding finding the kind of quirks within the scripts. Because I always used to edit my lines as well. So mm, the lines would come same. through. Yeah, so the lines would come through as an edit. And then I would have to re-edit the edit to make sure it, f- it So that's fit like the another character. piece of work on top of the work that you already had to do. Yeah. yeah. To a certain degree, yeah, because you knew, you knew what you would say and sound like. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember when I first got in there, um, a, a lot of kind of, a, a lot of people were kind of worried about what slang I would bring in and if it would be offensive or if it would be a bit too much. But I always knew the, knew the show and I knew, always knew what the show yeah, needed. So so I, me knowing the show, I would take that experience in and kind of go, well, I'm not going to give you, you know, yesterday slang. Um, I'm going to give you slang that's like, two years old, maybe three years old. Slang that's been about for a minute. So those of the wider audience outside of London that maybe have never heard it could kind of right. get it. You know, they may have heard it in their in their conversations or within music or within other things that they've seen over those past couple of years. But right. if there was ever anything that I brought in that people didn't understand, I would always kind of get the other actor to explain it. So for example, you know, um, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm loving your gums. And one of the characters, <laughs> you know, you know, one of the characters would be like gums or scums. And then another one would be like, he's talking about clothes. So I, you know, if there was anything that came in that was a little bit too much, I, there was always another actor there to kind of explain the slang mm-hmm. that I've just put out. 
Yeah, and and one of the biggest advocates of the slang was was Dot was June Brown. You know, she loved it. She knew that it was uh, reality. Yeah, she knew that it was authentic. She knew that it was reality, and she was another one that used to edit her lines as well. So, we, mm. me and her had a great relationship. So when we used to have scenes together, she always used to kind of like you know call me over and be like, "Okay, Ricky, this is what I've done with my scene," and I'd look at all her edits and make sure my cue lines you know, make sure I had my cue lines. And then she'd be like, okay, I need a bit of slang for this line. And I'd be like, oh, oh okay, Mrs. B. All right. Okay. And, and I would end up like having to give her a bit of slang. Do you know what I mean? So, but she, but through her doing that, she made it a lot more kind of acceptable for the audience to accept as well. Because if Dot's accepting yeah, it and, she, and, and she's embracing it, then, then the audience 100%. would too. Yeah, Dang, I didn't even think about it like that. That's pretty. That's pretty amazing. It's kind of game changer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she is a game changer. She is like one of the most meticulous uh, actors I know. Um, she knows her stuff inside out. And if a teapot was in the wrong place, she'd be like, you know, she'd ask why and why did you put it in? No, well, in the last scene, Dot put it in that cupboard. So why isn't it in that cupboard? Because that's where Dot left it. So do you know what I mean? She was very meticulous about. Um, all her scenes and what she would what she would bring to them you know like I mean I mean even like her cigarettes so a lot of the time you know people know Dot for smoking and a lot of the time she would she would light the cigarette and she'd wait until that you know especially if she's in a Mm. ponderous moment she'd wait until the ash is like that thick on on the cigarette and she would hold it and then they'd say action and then she would start do you know what i mean as if she's been there the whole time yeah yeah like yeah, thinking yeah. thinking That's about amazing. the last thing that just happened yeah she was meticulous i loved working with her man and i learned a lot from her as well That's fine detail at its best yeah wow absolutely great memories great um hearing you speak about it as well it's amazing um okay cool so another question so like, again, I've seen you throughout your career, throughout the most part, like you shifting mm. throughout all of these different things, though I did, I do remember the moment that you were on Strictly Come Dancing, right? Yeah, yeah. Can we have a conversation I done the Christ- about that? I've done a Christmas special. I don't, I don't think we have really, if I'm honest. I mean, I've, honest. I've seen you on it, but we never really even spoke about it. First and foremost, how did that even come about and... What was that like? Like, because again, that's somewhat like a full circle from what we've already been speaking about in the beginning. Yeah. So, I mean, it came about because, you know, Fatboy, the character that I was playing in EastEnders, was, was at his height. You know, uh, there was lots happening with him and the audience was really interested in me at that time as well. And, you know, Fatboy was a really kind of standout character because... Those that are, especially for those in London and those that know East London, the right. audience knew that they had an authentic character in there. They knew that, that somebody that came from it was there representing them and not just in one light, you know, like right. showing levels, showing showing different sides to what a street character brings, you know. Um, so, yeah, so his popularity was at its height at that point and um like strictly was always kind of they 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 were talking they were dib- dibble dallying with with my agent for for a while and the christmas special ended up coming up and they asked me if i would like to be a part of it and i jumped at the chance you know it was it was one of the things like the main show would be a great show for me i would love to do the main show you know so to to do it inside out uh, you know week to week um but this one was interesting because I was really enjoying myself. I had the partner, Jeanette, and she's fantastic, first and foremost. She's a fantastic mentor and tutor and teacher, and she was really good with me. Um, You know, some people may have thought, because I came from dance, as in street dance, that it would be easy for me to transition into ballroom. But Mm. as you know, they're two totally different worlds, different worlds. You know, street is about breaking, breaking down kind of styles and you know it, infusing it within street you know like street yeah. we could have gum boot we could have we could have tap we could have ballet and we could break it to make it street um ballroom there ain't no breaking there's rules it's just you know technical 
very technical and dance. Very, very technical. So there will be times where my body is naturally loose because of the, because of street. Yeah. And I had to be, I had to be rigid. I had to, you know, I had to be structured. I had to be kind of, you know, I had to be in the technique. Like even the way that you would walk um, was a certain style of walking. So if you didn't, if you didn't yeah. do that properly, then I would get pulled up and I would get taken back. You know, I remember my posture always kind of slumping forward. So Jeanette stuck a bar, like a weightlifting bar in the oh, back like of my T-shirt. One. Like a real, yeah, in the back of my T-shirt so that everything, like my back stayed straight oh and everything word. stayed upright, upright. So within rehearsals, that's how I was. And we was getting along great and I was learning the routine and everything was going smoothly. And then 10 days before the performance, I ended up pulling my groin muscle, which was the first time I had any type of... What? Like, in, yeah, it was the first time I How- had... Any any type of injury within dance or within movement or anything like that. How did that happen? Um, it happened through nothing. Pete. It didn't happen within. It happened when I was stretched. So I'd I'd done a full day at EastEnders, um, like a full oh, so you day. Were still like, working. Yeah, yeah. So I I was doing. Uh, I was acting on when I was needed when I needed to be in. Uh, and on the right. days off, I, I would be in rehearsals, or even sometimes after the day had finished, I would then finish at Eastie's, and a car would pick me up and they'd take me to wherever we needed to go for rehearsals. So, um, yeah. So this this was one of those times, and <laughs> okay, and yeah, I, times. it was one of those times. It was one of those times, and uh, so yeah, I'd finished the day at EastEnders. Uh, I've gone straight to rehearsals. I think I got there about 7, 7.30 in the evening and nothing happened. I got out of my kind of day clothes, got into, uh, you know, dance clothes. Um, I went to do one stretch and all I'd done was like touch my toes. Like it wasn't even a stretch stretch. I just touched my toes and something went pang it, 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 in my thigh. And I was like, oh, what's that? And me, I'm a guy that if, if, if anything like that happens, I'm just like, ah, oh, forget it. It's fine. You know, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, forget yeah. it. Forget but it. It's your fine. groin, your groin will let you know. Yeah. So th- th- like that was the first pang, right? And then, so I've done this, uh, I've carried on stretching. I've done a little stretch and like Jeanette's like, okay, cool. Are you ready to go? Like you're ready to like go through the routine? Like, let's just do it once and then we'll start cleaning up bits and we'll start perfecting bits and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, cool. And she started the music and the, the, the first two moves was just a walk. Like it was like right, left, right, left, right. And as I, as I stepped on my right leg, which where the, the pang happened, as I stepped on it, it just, it just went, it just broke, bro. It just was like, Kong! and I couldn't step on it. Like I, I, I tried to brush it off. Jeanette's like, you okay? You okay? You okay? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm fine. I'm fine. Like, start the music again. Start it. Let, let's go again. Let's go again. And I stood back up and I went to step on it again. And it was it was gone, bro. I couldn't step on it at all. So this was literally, we just started. We just started. I've been there five, ten minutes. And so I'm sitting on the floor. I'm worried about the performance. It's ten days before the performance. It's so something on, that I really want to do. Can I just ask yeah? a question? Was this one performance or was this, like, spread out through, like, a week or...? The show itself, the Christmas show itself. Yeah, yeah. The Christmas show itself would would be done all on one day. So how many routines did you have to learn? Well, there was my main one. And it it was not until I turned up on the day that I found out that there was others that I needed to learn as well. But on the day, on the day. So... um, yeah, so I'm sitting there on the floor. I didn't know what it was or like why it had happened. They was like, okay, cool, let's rush you into physio. Went down to physio and they were like, yeah, um, like you've pulled your groin, you're out for about two to three weeks. So I laughed and I said to the guy, well, listen, I've got 10 days before the show. So what are we going to do? They're like, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, okay, so um, th- they were like, well, as long as you can rest, ice, elevate it, like rest it as much as you can Hardcore. for as long as you can. And uh, then you might be able to get back in. The second question was, oh, do you have work? And I was like, yeah, I've got work tomorrow. 
You know what I mean? So I still had EastEnders work. So I, there wasn't no really real rest, rest period, you know? Completely. I had maybe, I think, maybe two days off, off, um, with nothing in the diary. Um, and, you know, I was just like, oh, I, 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 you know, I was just determined to do it. Um, by the end of that week, I, that, I think when the growing went, it was on the Monday, but by, by the Friday, they right. were doing pro- promo shots for Strictly in, um, in kind of Winter Wonderland, like a kind of Christmassy, right. Christ- I can't even remember where we was. I think it was in Windsor where they had all the ferns and everything, but they, they created this whole big kind of Christmas uh, land. It had like uh, Santa's workshops. It had like reindeer, it had an ice rink in it and stuff like that. But we had to do promotional shots. And, you know, I was just I was just like, okay, cool, let's go. So I strapped it up and I shouldn't have been really walking on it even. Like, but I strapped it up and I'd done as much as I could that day. I remember there was a couple of times where I had to do a lift and I would naturally kind of, use my right okay and like my right leg to kind of pick up and lift right and I remember doing it once and I, I got her I got her up but then like the second time I was like I can't do this like and I, I knew oh, wow. I didn't have the strength within within the leg to to do it so so you were you were able to actually do the show though you actually pulled it off well I mean it got to the night before it got to the night before and the, or I should say the day before where me and Jeanette, we had a rehearsal. Um, it was a lot better at that point, but it still wasn't a hundred percent. I couldn't go upstairs. So if you know, like the movement of your knees, as you go upstairs, I couldn't go up, up go upstairs with the, with the right leg. I had to go side to side. I had to step like a, like a crab right. to get, to right. get up the so, stairs. So, so did you, were you able to do, the were you not able to do all of the performances did you just pull off one well, well this th- yeah no this is what no this is what i'm getting to so we 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 on the night before like Jeanette basically changed the whole routine you know she oh, there was bits that we kept yeah but we there was bits that we kept but a lot of it we changed and so i had to learn a whole new routine the day before a lot of the lifts were done on the left side now which was awkward but i could do it you know, I, I had to get it done and so that night I'm kind of not stressing, but worried a little bit about how this is going to go down. But again, very, still very determined. The next day, the day of the show, the day that we're going to record everything, I'm called in at seven. And, you know, as, as I get called in, uh, we do a little mini warm up, and we've gone into the big room where all the professional dancers are doing this intro routine. And they're going around in circles. It's very, it's very quick paced. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, and not thinking that this had anything to do with me or any of the other, you know, celebrity performers. I was like, oh, this is what you, this is the intro dance. And then they're like, yeah, can we have all the celeb dancers in, please? And I was just like, okay. And literally, Pete, there was no kind of teaching of the routine. It was, it was, I got dragged along. Grown. And yeah, I got dragged along, Jeanette. And I, because I'm good at following as well. So, you know, from dance, again, you'd ha- sometimes you learn how to follow, right? You, right? All right, you don't know the routine too tough. So the guy that's standing in front of you or the girl that's standing in front of you knows it a little bit better. So I can, I'll stand beside and I'll follow. And basically I, I use that following technique to get that first. And we only done the rehearsal once. It wasn't like we went over it three, four times. We just done it the once through where we, there was a lot of kind of twirls, turns, but it went round in a whole circle. And then we learned the outro uh, dance as well, which I just jumped into. Again, very much following. Um, and then we had two rehearsals for our main dance. Right. And once we went into that, the first rehearsal that I'd done, I messed up halfway through. And I was, I was you know, I, I wasn't best pleased, shall we say. Right. And I, I kind of remember feeling this this angst on me, like the eyes were on me and people were kind of being like, mm, you know, I don't know how this is going to turn out sort of thing. The second the second rehearsal that we done went a lot better, but I was still feeling bits and pieces. So I remember they ended up putting me on first. Now, right. sometimes when they do that, they'll do, sometimes when they do that, Right, they'll do that because if you 
if you mess up or if you fail, then you can start with a low score and everybody after you, they can build up, right? A you can build bar. up those scores. Yeah. Um, and and as, as it that? is as well. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, Some people aren't. But, yeah, true. Um, but, like, also with this this dance, I come down on wires from a snowboard from the roof. And I I've got a... This. I've got to hit a snowman. I've got to hit the snowman. Did I hit the snowman's head off? It was either at the beginning or the end. Um, but I come down uh, from, from the roof. So I'm being wired up as well. I'm having to surf a, like the silver surfer. I'm having to surf the surfboard the whole way down until the performance starts. The performance went fantastic. Like, you know, it, it'll be all right on the night type of style. You know what I mean? When it comes down to showtime, we pull it out. Uh, the, the, the performance itself went fantastic. Um, we still got some, we, we, I mean, for, for, for the 10 days that I was out and learning a routine before the scores were okay. I think it was like three eights and a seven, but Jeanette was like, you know, we should have got more. We should have got more right. for what we've done, but you know, that's, that's besides the point. Once I, I was so happy that we'd done it and we'd smashed it and I'd finished without yeah, any complication. And you were hurt as well. Right. Um, and I remember like, so at the, at the end of a performance, you run up the stairs at the end of Strictly to go up to another level to have interviews and stuff like that. Right. And you got to remember that I couldn't climb stairs, but as soon as this performance was done, you could. like the adrenaline, the <laughs> adrenaline hit me and me and Jeanette boy, we was running up those stairs. We was like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah, boom, 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 boom. and got to the top. And I was like, raw, like nothing pulled, nothing happened. All right. We're all right. You know? Um, but I tell you what, like that was one of my most nervous performances um, I've, I've had. I've done live before. I'm really, I'm really cool with doing live. I, it's not like doing a live show, right? You know, like really kind of sits in me because I come from theater as well. So you know, when it's showtime, it's showtime. But I remember like my heart jumping outside of my chest just before we started, and I'd never right. really felt that type of nervousness or that type of anxiety b before a show. So I was really, really pleased that we, we got it in and got it done. I and it was a great experience. Uh, I think this story is really incredible to actually hear it as well. You know, I've known you for so long now and we've actually never really spoken about it, but I think that it's just like a really good indication of just kind of like following like where your heart pulls you. Do you know what I mean? Like, because you did come from dance and then you had like a whole acting career like on EastEnders. And to be honest, like you wouldn't have got on Strictly if it wasn't for you acting. Yeah, you know exactly. Mean? Yeah, so exactly. it's just it's just really good to hear like that story kind of like come full circle. And on top of it, not only were you dancing again, like on TV, but you were learning mm -hmm. like a whole new style. So it's just yeah. like an upgrade on top of an upgrade on top of an upgrade. Yes, yeah, skills, bro. Skills. And <laughs> and like I I had my I had my nan in my kind of in my chest to do that show. That was a show that she loved yeah. watching as well. Oh, and amazing. like I say, she she was the one that introduced me to dance. So, you know, and, and she had passed at that time as well. So it was a great show to kind of do for her, you know. I knew she was looking down on me. I knew she kind of blessed me. I knew she got me through the the the, the damn show, yeah, and and got me through without any kind of hiccups or the injury pulling or whatever the right. case may be. So yeah, it was a really lovely show to do um, for loads of different reasons. That's an amazing story, man. I'm really really super happy to hear that. Um, okay, would you say that? Do you have any advice for people that are pursuing another passion along with the one that they already have? Yeah, do it. I mean, if it's in your soul, um, if it's part of you, then do it. There's 101 people out there that will tell you no and will stop you or try to stop you doing something. Like, don't be the first person to tell yourself no. You know, like if it's in you, if it's part of you, then go for it jump in nothing's stopping you um you know transition happens not just in performance land but it happens in life some people will retire from one job and find something totally different you know some some people might be in construction and then go to gardening or you know 
you start doing, you start painting, you know, um, nothing's out there to stop you mm-hmm. apart from yourself. So if you want to do it, go for it, go for it, go for it wholeheartedly, do as much research as you can, do as many classes as you can, you know, get yourself in, uh, the more prepared you are, the more you do, the more prepared you will be to succeed when it comes to the, the time to put that forward. So jump in, don't deny yourself. Wise words. What what are your other passions, just out of curiosity? Uh, well, apart from acting and dancing. Yeah, would you say? Well, singing is not one of them. Uh, so let's just... <laughs> Stop. Yeah, singing is not one of them. Um, apart from like singing out to Bob Marley in my house with you know no mics and 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 no cameras, um, but I really I really enjoy art. Like I've really jumped into art recently. Like I enjoy right. watching it. I enjoy doing it. Um, it's become like a really kind of therapeutic thing to do, uh, and and not on any big grand scale, but just sometimes even doodling or sometimes coloring you know or sometimes right. making a little something like i can show you i can show you a little something i'm i'm in the missus's office right now but uh this was something that i kind of this was a little thing this was a this was a uh, a toothbrush holder and it was blue and during lockdown i kind of you know redesigned it and like this so her name's eleni so this is the initial of her uh, of her name and on the back it's got um eleni in, in japanese here I'm sure it's wow. Japanese. Wow, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, yeah. So it just looks, it looks cool. And like, so even doing stuff like this, like this got me creative. There, there's, I don't know whether you can see, but there's like little stars and like I had done little streaks to be stars. And then yeah, I even yeah, done like yeah, a little that. moon on this side as well. Like, and like these little kind of almost silhouette grass strikes. Yeah, so I, see it. It, I mean, it's not great, but what it is, it, it, it got me creative. It got me painting. It got me kind of thinking and, passion. and uh, yeah, a, a, a lot of work went into just making that just so that, just so that she could firstly be happy with it, but you know, so we could turn something old into something new and make it useful rather than just chucking it out, you know? Amazing. So yeah, man. I mean, art has definitely become part of that um podcast is another one like I, I do a lot of podcasts um mostly to do with football so another passion of mine is my is is my team I support Tottenham Hotspur they're not doing too great right now but um I I I support them win lose or draw and so I'll, I'll do a lot of podcasts on that uh with last word on Spurs or with Chris Cowlin on his YouTube channel or you know um stuff like that um and so you know I'm just I, I just love jumping in Nice. I love jumping in, but th- but those are a couple of my my extra passions. Amazing, um, yeah, man, it's really good to hear. It's cool. I remember when you had made that that what you just showed us, and you like Ricky was so proud of it. Like it was amazing, <laughs> but, and and I think and it was like I think it was like the beginning of the lockdown as well, like the first yeah. one. And I think at that yeah. point we really needed just something to uplift us. Do you know what I mean? Like whatever that would be like what, like some people really like delve into like working out or some people like running. And, but I remember like even cooking and oh my God. Yeah. 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 Banana bread guys, (laughs) guys, guys, Ricky's banana bread. Oh my God. First and foremost, I used to hate banana bread. I used to hate banana bread. And Ricky was just like, Oh, I've made banana bread. And I, and I was just like, you can keep the banana bread because every time I've tasted banana bread, I'm just like, it's just not nice for me. But Ricky's banana bread literally changed my whole perception of what banana bread (laughs) could possibly taste like. That's another passion. I'm so happy. That's another passion. I'm so happy that he found that. Oh my God. And then I started paying for the banana bread. Like this. It it went in. it It became a thing. And it still is a thing. It's amazing. It got serious. It got serious. Um, but yeah, that was that was that was one of the benefits of of lockdown. It was kind of going going inside and kind of going, okay, cool. Well, what can we improve within life? Do you know what I mean? So cooking was one of those things that kept me creative. It was be it was still being creative. It was still within the creative realms of art and and, and really? stuff like that. So. So yeah, banana bread was definitely um, a revelation, and I had to go through 
and and this is this is maybe a, maybe it's a lesson for your listeners as well. But the first banana bread came out really bad; it didn't work. The second one came out not you know still not eatable. But then I had to kind of work it out why it was coming out like that. And then by the and third you, time, I started. You're good at that. Yeah, I started finessing. I started finessing the recipe. I started finessing the techniques and stuff like that. And good word. it came out, yeah, it, it came out bombastic, you know? so <laughs> Another good word. An- another good one for you. <laughs> yeah, so so that, and, and also when it came down to, like, cooking, I started getting fed up of all the oil within certain foods or within certain takeout foods. I really enjoy Indian food. So I remember like our local takeaway, which they do a really good curry, but it just started coming with too much oil in it. And I was just like, this is not good. Like, I don't like it anymore. So I was like, I had enough. So I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to start cooking and I'm going to find, you know, the recipes that work for me. And um, yeah, so I do a a banging chicken curry, chicken jalfrezi and a great vegan curry as well. So uh, yeah, so, and the vegan curry came along. I was just going to say the vegan curry came along because my missus was on a, a diet and she wasn't eating that much. And I was like, okay, well, let me find something tasty and nutritious for her to enjoy her food rather than just, you know, eat into fuel. And right. that's how that came about. So, and again, over time, I kind of finessed it. I kind of gone, I, I said to myself, okay, I followed the recipe one time, but then I started adding bits, taking bits away to find the right balance and to find, you know, the 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 key to the dish until like we was all happy amazing i'm so happy i'm so happy that happened i'm so happy that you got to eat too much oil in indian curry and then you just <laughs> <it on>. um, <laughs> but what i was gonna say is i find it really interesting because i think it's those things there and i really get inspired by that as well like when you experience something and I've done it and I've I've experienced it a lot of times. Like when I was um, like going to battles and stuff out in America and I was just like, oh, I don't really like this. I was like, this could be so much better. And then I decided to create my own. And then probably about a month or two ago, I was on a podcast and I was just like, mm, like, I feel like those questions weren't as great as they could have been. I feel like I'm going to start my own. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's those things which kind of trigger you to kind of like push you into an area that you're like, ah, oh, I don't like it. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to create my own. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think th- there, there is a strength in having enough, like getting fed up, you know, like, so having enough of the way certain things are going. You know, and then going, okay, well, what can I do to change this? Do you know what I mean? What can I do to improve this? And it's great at kind of, on both cases there, in the dance battle world and within this, this your podcast world, that you've said you haven't, de- like we started this, you haven't denied yourself. You've gone, okay, cool. Let me do it. Let me, t- let me take up the challenge and let me do it. And it's going great, right? So. Oh my God, it's going so good. Um, and, and I think as well, just specifically, like, because I guess I'm also have gone through a lot of transitions within my career and um, I just realized that so many other people are as well, um, whether mm. it be whatever they're doing. Do you know what I mean? Mine is dance, but I'm sure a lot of actors have or just whatever, like whatever field you're in. So I think that it's just a good place to speak about it as well and just have someone like yourself, which has come from dance and just really elevated into like tv and movies and then it took you back round to a dance show you know and yeah. now we're having this conversation here right now i mean when you look at the journey it's actually really impressive you know yeah but i think we i think we all have that within us as well it's like sometimes we can get too used to the life that 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 we're in or with you know we're, we start getting comfortable in the place that we're in and we as humans have always wanted to do more, always wanted to learn more, always wanted to progress, always wanted to, you know, to achieve the things that we really want to to do. So it's great that, I mean, us as performers, we're always doing that. Yeah, it doesn't matter how Completely. old we get, we're always doing that. Okay, cool. Where can I improve? Where can I improve? Where can I improve? And that's within life as well. Like, you know, where can I... 
even if it's like reading books, you know what I mean? So yeah. I haven't read, you know, so it'd be like, I haven't read in a year, let's say, I need to start my reading up, you know? So even if I do 10 pages a day, that's what I'm going to do. So it's all about kind of, especially during lockdown as well, it, it's given everybody an opportunity to kind of find those things and kind of, and jump on them. Before we didn't really have the time because nine yeah. to fives and, and bills and work and, and, and life take over. And being able to be on this lockdown gave a lot of us the opportunity to, to, to jump back into those things so that we can, again, progress, you know, and, and improve within life. Amazing. Um, yeah, one last question. One last question. You had mentioned briefly um, that you were doing Princess Switch and you had um, shot in Scotland a couple months ago. Can you um, give yeah. us a little bit of information how you actually, like, did you audition for that or like? The, 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 so when I done Princess Switch 2, which was my right. first... Um, my, my kind of my the first movie I, yes right. I auditioned for it so it was an audition that came through my agent and um you know I went to the audition rooms at Spotlight and um I done I think it was two rounds two rounds of audition so the first audition I went in with the casting agent uh read with her she was fantastic one of the best casting agents that I've read with you know ever just because she brought a lot to it. A lot of the time people will read it flat because they'll read the other lines flat because they have to read it 50 other times with everybody else that's walking through the door. But this woman really put a lot of energy and a lot of passion into, into reading. And so I Thank had something you. to bounce off. Yeah. So I, I ended up bouncing up, uh, bouncing off, off of her within the first audition. The second audition came through and the director and the writer was also in the room. And I, you know, they asked me to impro a couple of bits and they asked me to change a few bits. And um, yeah, it went really well. So well that and I this, got the part a couple of days later. This is your first movie. This, that was your first movie, right? That was the first movie. Yeah. So right. do, doing a sequel, um, well, I should say that part three. Um, yeah, I didn't have to audition for that one. Like they already knew yeah. that my character Completely. was coming back and they already wanted me there. They already seen what I'd done. So they knew that they 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 wanted the character of Reggie uh, back in the Princess Switch. So, so for everyone that hasn't seen that movie, the second one at least, oh my god, please watch the movie. Like I was literally just cracking up and laughing so hard. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's different when you know your friend as well, but um, just the character within him is amazing. Um, is there anything that you can kind of share with us, just like a little bit, a little bit for the third Ooh. one? Um, well, in the third one, there is a lot more uh, of Reggie within the whole movie, which is a good thing for me. Um, so there, there's a lot more comedic moments. And I suppose the one little nugget of, of inside stroke exclusive, I suppose I could give you was that I'm doing my own stunts in this one. <laughs> yeah, so I'm doing my own stunts in this one. Yeah, so it was loads and loads and loads of fun doing it. I mean, you know, there was a lot of wire work and I was, I thought that the wire work would be done within an hour. Nuh-uh, mm-mm, nah, mm-mm. No, it wasn't. Um, I was there the whole day, uh, like five hours on this wire, up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, so it was great because it, it's just another string to the bow to be able to kind of jump in and do your own stunts and kind of, you know, play that Tom Cruise, you know, Tom Cruise does right. all his own stunts and, and to be able to say that, you know, like, oh yeah, I've I done all my own stunts in Princess Switch, uh, Princess Switch 3, you know, just like Tom Cruise, you know, was a great thing to do. Um, so yeah, it is, they, they've, they've, ta- they've taken it up a notch. There's, um, there's, it's not just, so it, the Princess Switch, I should explain to those that don't know, is a Christmas movie. It's, uh, it's a bit like uh, The Prince and the Pauper you know, and a kind of take on that. Um, and if you haven't watched it, go watch it. Uh, part one and part two is already out on Netflix right now. And come November, uh, part three will be out. And um, Amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of goodness coming from it. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a fantastic part to play. And, you know, the, the, the character that I play is a bit of a fashionista, wears some weird stuff, but ends up working on screen. I don't know how. Um, that yeah, yeah. 
yeah, like just it, it was just fun to play. It was just fun to Amazing. play. Amazing. Okay, cool. So um yeah, let's let's wrap that up right now. Um Ricky Norwood, thank you for coming on five six seven now. What? Yeah, my pleasure, my friend. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, man. Thank you for sharing your story. We appreciate you. Hopefully we can have you again at some point soon in the future. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, for all of my friends that are watching this, um, thank you for tuning in and indulging in Ricky Norwood and look out for the next one that will be coming really soon. All right. Thank you guys. Until soon. Bye.